Royals all across the world are known for trying various activities. Modern royals not only keep themselves busy with multiple activities, but a few also try their luck at acting. In recent years, we've seen quite a few royals on the big screen. So who are these royals? In today's video, we'll talk about the acting career of the top 12 royals who act in films and television. For some, it was bread and butter. For others, it was just a fun activity. So without further ado, let's get started. At number 12, we've got King William Alexander of the Netherlands. He was born 27th of April, 1967, as the eldest child of Princess Beatrix and Prince Claus. He has appeared in various documentaries showcasing his life and royal duties. He's also been featured in TV series and mini television series, providing insights into his role as the King of the Netherlands. He was first featured in the documentary Nader Tot Maxima, The Royal Wedding Tapes, released in 2002. He also can be seen in the TV miniseries Athens, 2004, Games of the 28th Olympiad, and the TV series RTL Boulevard, which was released in 2010. He also appeared in three episodes in the TV series Koning Negdad from 2014 to 2016. Additionally, King William Alexander has made appearances in documentaries under his previous title as Prince William Alexander, contributing to the public's understanding of the Dutch monarchy and his responsibilities as a royal figure. Besides acting, his character and story have been portrayed in dramatic productions. The Dutch miniseries Crowns and Jewels includes a character based on William Alexander, played by Vincent Linthrost, which delves into the drama surrounding the royal house of Orange. Additionally, in the TV series Maxima Zora Guetta, actor Martin Lakemeyer portrays King William Alexander. The series focuses on his romance with the Queen. Next, we've got Prince William and Prince Harry, the brother duo, children of King Charles III and Diana, Princess of Wales. They are the two most important figures in the British royal family. In a surprising twist, Prince William and Prince Harry stepped out of the royal duties and into the world of acting, though briefly they made cameos in the Star Wars franchise. The royal brothers were confirmed to have cameo appearances as Star Troopers in the 2017 blockbuster Star Wars The Last Jedi. During a visit to the film set at Pinewood Studios in April 2016, the princes donned the iconic white armor of the stormtroopers and participated in a scene. They appeared in a sequence where a group of stormtroopers encountered Finn, played by John Boyega, and the characters Rose and DJ, played by Kelly Marie Tran and Benicio Del Toro. The scene takes place towards the end of the film, where Finn and Rose are captured by the First Order. Despite the excitement surrounding their participation, the scene featuring Prince William and Prince Harry was ultimately cut from the final version of the film. However, for fans who were disappointed by this, the deleted scene was later released on YouTube and was included as an outtake on the film's DVD. Next, we've got Princess Beatrice. She's a member of the British royal family, born August 8, 1988. She's the elder daughter of Prince Andrew, Duke of York, and Sarah, Duchess of York. She has a brief but important time in the world of acting. Her acting debut was not in pursuit of a career, but rather a unique opportunity linked to her family's history in a project led by Mother Sarah, Duchess of York. Princess Beatrice's acting debut came with the film The Young Victoria, released in 2009. The film follows the early years of Queen Victoria's reign, with Emily Blunt starring in the lead role. Princess Beatrice appeared in a cameo role as one of Queen Victoria's ladies-in-waiting during the coronation scene. Her participation in this film was significant, as it reportedly made her the first member of the British royal family to appear in a non-documentary feature film. But her role was uncredited, and it was emphasized that her involvement was purely for fun. Princess Beatrice's appearance was brief, but it was a memorable moment at the beginning of the film. Her likeness to her great-great-great-great-grandmother, Queen Victoria, was noted as a contributing factor to her being cast in this cameo role. Next, we've got Zara Tyndall, born May 15, 1981. She's the daughter of Anne, Princess Royal, and Captain Mark Phillips. She's the eldest granddaughter of the late Queen Elizabeth II. Zara has also made appearances in media, including short films, documentary, and as a brand ambassador. She's showcased her acting skills in short film for Land Rover, a brand with which she has a long-standing relationship as an ambassador. In a 30-second clip, she appeared alongside former rugby player David Flatman at the Stables, which was part of the humorous campaign for Land Rover. She also has been featured in the documentary Zara and Mike, No Nonsense Royals, which aired on Channel 5. This documentary provided an insight into her marriage with Mike Tyndall and their life away from the public eye. Sarah Tyndall's media appearance have been limited but impactful, showcasing her connection to her equestrian roots and her role as a brand ambassador for Land Rover. While she's not pursued a career in acting, presenting her documentary features and her husband's reality TV appearances have given the public a glimpse into the life of this royal couple. Sarah's honest and approachable nature continues to endear her fans to her from around the world. 
At number eight, we've got Grace Kelly, the Princess of Monaco. She's also known as Grace of Monaco. She was an American actress before becoming a princess. Her journey from Hollywood royalty to real life princess was marked by a brief but illustrious acting career. Grace Kelly embarked on her acting career at the age of 20, appearing in New York City's theatrical production in over 40 episodes of the live drama productions during the early 1950s golden age of television. She made her screen debut in the televised play of Old Lady Robbins in 1948 on the anthology series Craft Television Theater. Kelly's Broadway debut came in 1949 playing Bertha in August Strindberg's The Father. Kelly's big screen debut was a minor role in the 1951 drama 14 Hours. She gained stardom from her roles in Fred Zeinman's western High Noon and John Ford's adventure romance Mogambo. Her performance in Mogambo earned her a Golden Globe Award for Best Supporting Actress and the nomination for the Academy Award for Best Supporting Actress. Kelly's breakthrough year was in 1954 when she starred in five films, including two for Alfred Hitchcock's Dial M for Murder and Rear Window. She received the Academy Award and Golden Globe in 1955 for her role in The Country Girl. She retired from acting in 1956 to marry Prince Rainier III of Monaco. Next, we've got Prince Albert of Monaco, born the 14th of March, 1958. Prince Albert II of Monaco has been reigning since 2005. He's made several appearances in documentaries and has been involved in various roles that showcased his life, heritage, and the monarchy elites. He and Princess Charlene starred in a Channel 4 documentary film on the eve of Monaco Grand Prix. The film highlights the opulence of Monte Carlo and includes interviews with the royal couple and the event's significance. In the documentary, quintessentially Irish, he discusses his connections to Ireland through his late mother, Princess Grace, and her family's history in the country mayo. Additionally, in the documentary series Inside Monaco, Prince Albert II provides a rare glimpse into the House of Grimaldi, sharing insights about his life as a royal and the responsibilities that come with it. The series also featured behind-the-scenes looks at Monaco's iconic events and locations, such as the Formula One Grand Prix and the Hotel de Paris. Prince Albert II not only appears in the documentaries, but is also taken on the role of a presenter, particularly in showcasing the Prince's Palace of Monaco. He's been involved in presenting the palace as a historical and cultural site, highlighting its significance and events that it hosts. Next, we've got Simeon Saxe Coburg Gotha, the former Tsar of Bulgaria. Born on the 16th of June, 1937, Simeon II ruled Bulgaria from 1943 until 46. In 1946, the monarchy was abolished and he went to exile. He's been the subject of documentaries that delve into his intriguing life and political career. One notable documentary is The Boy Who Was King, a 2011 Bulgarian film directed by Andrei Palnov. Simeon Saks Coburg Gotha was featured in that documentary. The documentary portrays the life of Simeon Saks Coburg Gotha, who became the last Bulgarian czar at the age of six and later returned to Bulgaria after years in exile, eventually becoming the country's prime minister in 2001. The Boy Who Was King received acclaim for its storytelling, use of archival footage and insight into the turbulent political climate of Bulgaria during its transitional period. The film itself provides a comprehensive look at Simeon Sachs Coburg Gotha's life, blending personal footage with historical context and the perspectives of various Bulgarians who supported him. The film received nominations and awards at various international film festivals. It was included in the official selections of Toronto International Film Festival, International Documentary Film Festival Amsterdam, and others. The film is the third part director Andres Palnov's unofficial trilogy on the stupidity of the Bulgarian transition period. Next, we've got Princess Clotilde of Savoy, also known as Clotilde Coran. Born the 3rd of April, 1969, she's married to Emmanuel Filiberto del Savoy, who is a member of the House of Savoy. She is a French actress who has made a significant career in film and television. Clotilde is recognized for her remarkable talent and charisma in the acting world. She began her career in theater before transitioning to cinema in the 1990s. Her first film role was in 1990 in the French film Le Petit Criminal, directed by Jacques Dolan. Over the years, she's appeared in a variety of French and international productions. Clotilde's role in the film Leah, released in 1996, earned her a Caesar nomination for Best Supporting Actress. She's also appeared in La Film de Artenac and La Guerre de la Paix. Her international work includes roles in films such as Fan Fan and The Man in the Iron Mask. She's also featured in the Ida Piaf biopic, Live Vive and Rose, in 2007, playing Annette Gachon. Among her recent ventures, Clotilde appeared in An Easy Girl in 2019 
in Benedette in 2021. Alongside from acting, Clotilde has explored other artistic fields, including singing and writing. She's also been an activist for various causes, such as education, environmental protection, and women's rights. At number four, we've got Princess Theodora of Grace in Denmark. Born the 9th of June, 1983, she is the daughter of the late deposed King Constantine II and Princess Anne Marie of Denmark. She is not only a member of the Greek and Danish royal family lines, but also a British actress known for her work under the stage name Theodora Greece. Princess Theodora pursued her passion for acting after completing her education. She received her Bachelor of Arts in the Theater Arts of Brown University. In April 2010, she moved to Los Angeles to further her acting career. Princess Theodora made her television debut December 5, 2011 as Secretary Allison Montgomery in the long-running soap opera The Bold and the Beautiful. She portrayed the office assistant of Dollar Bill Spencer and was involved in a romance with Deacon Sharp, the biological father of Hope Logan. Her last appearance on the show was in 2016. Princess Theodora has appeared in a variety of films and short films throughout her acting career. Her recent film released in 2022, The Great Awakening, is one of many films. With a diverse filmography and a background that combines royal lineage with artistic pursuits, Princess Theodora continues to be a notable figure in both the aristocrat and entertainment spheres. Next, we've got King Charles III, born the 14th of November, 1948. He's the King of the United Kingdom and the 14 other Commonwealth realms. He became the King upon his mother, Queen Elizabeth II's deaths in 2022. King Charles III has made several appearances on television, although not in a professional acting capacity. His appearances have been part of his royal duties or special features in various programs. Back in 1984, he participated in a Jack Anori, a children's show where he read his book, The Old Man of Lochnagar. In 2000, King Charles appeared in a live episode of the popular British soap opera, Coronation Street, to mark the show's 40th anniversary. In 2022, alongside Camilla, King Charles joined the East Enders Street Party to celebrate Queen Elizabeth II's Platinum Jubilee. Same year, he appeared in an episode of The Repair Shop, where the team restored two valuable items chosen by him. Other appearances include presenting a weather forecast on BBC Scotland, guest editing and appearing in an episode of Country File, and joining This Morning for its 30th anniversary. It's important to note that while King Charles III has appeared on television, these appearances were not acting roles in the traditional sense, but rather participating in special segments or episodes related to his royal duties and public engagements. Next, we've got Prince Joachim of Denmark. Born the 7th of June 1969, he's the younger son of Queen Margaret II. His older brother, King Frederick X, has been featured in documentaries that provide a glimpse into his life and thoughts. In the documentary titled The Other Prince, Joachim, cameras were allowed into his home and workplace, offering a unique look into his family life and role as the second son of Queen Margaret. This documentary includes personal interviews that give viewers remarkable insight into the Prince Joachim's personal thoughts and feelings. In 2019, he presented a documentary series called Prince Joachim Forteller for Denmark's radio. The six-part series, which he also co-produced, delves into the ideas and events that have shaped Denmark's history, highlighting Joachim's passion for exploring and sharing historical narratives. The documentary was for Danish network DRK and was produced by Nordisk Film Productions, in which he lent his voice. Prince Joachim of Denmark's contributions to documentaries are more in the realm of personal insights and narrations rather than acting roles. His participation in these projects allows the public to understand his perspective in the royal family's life more closely. There is no evidence of an acting career in the traditional sense, such as appearing in fictional films or television series. And at number one, we've got Meghan Markle, the Duchess of Sussex. Born August 4th, 1981, she's an American member of the British royal family. She's a businesswoman and a former actress. Before getting married to Prince Harry, she was working as an actress. Her acting career began in the early 2000s, with her first official acting TV debut credit as Nurse Jill in General Hospital. However, her acting debut was around the age of 14 in the 1990s. Megan's early roles include brief appearances on shows like CSI New York and 90210, and in films such as Horrible Losses. She also worked as one of the briefcase girls in Deal or No Deal in 2006. Megan's most notable role was as Rachel Zane on the TV legal drama Suits which she played for seven seasons from 2011 to 2018. Her character, a talented paralegal, was central to the show's plot, and her relationship with the protagonist, Mike Ross, was a key storyline. Aside from Suits, Megan appeared on other TV shows and movies, including Castle, with Sparks Fly, and Antisocial. However, after her marriage, she retired from acting, but currently she's working as a content creator and producer with a focus on projects that resonate with her and her audience. And with this, we wrap up this video. We hope you enjoyed the video. If you found the channel interesting, then subscribe to it. Thank you.
See you in the next video.